We can also use 4D simulation to help plan and manage the ordering and tracking of materials for our construction activities. For materials management, we'll need to store and work with some new values for each of our building elements. For example, it would be nice to track the order date, the order status, the delivery status, and maybe even the location of the materials after they've been delivered to the site. Now since these parameters aren't already defined for the building elements in our project, we'll need to add a few new parameters to store and work with these values. Let's start by creating some shared parameters that'll let us add these tracking fields to our building elements. Let's start by switching to the Manage tab and opening the Shared Parameters tool. In the Edit Shared Parameters dialog, we can create a new group for our materials management parameters. Then we'll add new parameters within that group. Let's start by creating one called Material Order Date. I'll make that a text field. Say OK. We'll also create one for the Material Order Status. Again, making that a text field. We'll create similar ones for the Material Delivery Date. and the material delivery status. Again, a text field. Finally, we'll create a parameter for the material location. That'll be the location where the material is stored on site after it's delivered. Again, a text field. Say OK. Let's close that up. Now, the advantage of creating these as shared parameters is that we'll be able to call them out in tags as well as schedule them. Now that we've created the shared parameters, let's add these as project parameters and assign them to the building elements in our project. The way we do that is we open the Project Parameters tool. We can add different parameters, including the shared parameters that we've just set up. Let's go through and select the materials management ones that we've just created. We'll put the order date in. Let's group that so that it appears in the Properties palette nicely under the Construction grouping. Then we'll assign it to specific building elements. We could assign that to all the different elements in our project that we would want to track this information for, but let's for right now focus on the columns as well as the structural framing elements. We'll say OK, and that'll be added. Let's add another shared parameter. Again, selecting from the shared parameters that we've already defined. We'll go for the order status this time. Say OK. Again, grouping it under the construction grouping and assigning it to the structural columns and the structural framing elements. Continuing, we'll also select the delivery ones, delivery date, grouping it under construction, and assigning it to the specific elements, structural columns and structural framing. We'll go for the delivery status. Again, grouping it under construction and assigning it to the structural columns and the structural framing elements. And finally, we'll add that material location also grouping it under the construction elements and assigning it to structural columns and structural framing. Say OK. Say OK. And now those parameters are going to be available on each of the different structural columns and structural framing elements in our building model. Let's switch to another view which will make it easy to select those structural framing elements. For example, if we go to this 3D structural view, we can select a specific structural element and you'll see those new parameters are available. The material order date and status, the delivery date and status, and the material location. Now we can enter a value for the selected structural element just by clicking in the field and typing in a value. For example, on the order side, let's say those are ordered, but on the delivery side, let's say that it is not delivered yet. We can continue to select individual elements in this 3D view, but there are other views which will make that process easier. For example, if we switch to the ceiling plan, 
which shows all the structural columns, the beams, and the joist elements. We can select all of the different elements and filter that selection so that we get only the structural columns. Then we can indicate that all of those columns on the first floor have been ordered, but not delivered. To change the values for a subset of the columns on the floor, again we can select maybe just the columns in that corner, filter it, and we'll enter that those have actually been delivered now. And they're being stored in staging area A. Well, it's easy to select the elements in the model view, then enter the values through the properties palette, it's even easier to create a schedule which lists all the different elements that have these fields available, and then enter the values directly into the schedule view. Let's see how that works. To create that schedule, let's switch to the View tab. We'll choose Schedules, and we'll choose a Schedule of Quantities. In this case, we'll create a schedule of the structural columns. Say OK, and we'll choose the values that we want to see in our schedule. Let's go ahead and include, oh, the base level of the columns, so we can identify them, as well as the mark, that's the individual ID of each of the columns. We can put in the 4D task ID to keep track of which construction activity is linked to this column. And then we can put in our new materials field. Let's put in the material order date, the ordering status, the delivery date, the delivery status, as well as the material location. Let's do a little sorting and grouping to organize that. Let's sort it first by 4D task ID then by the order status, and finally by the mark of each individual column. We'll put a footer at the bottom of each of these groups, reporting the title and count, as well as putting a blank line to make the schedule a little bit easier to read. When we say OK, the schedule opens, and in this convenient grid view, we can review, enter, or track any of the values very quickly. For example, if the structural column 1A4 is delivered, we can change the value right here and enter where it's stored, maybe in staging area B. Schedule views allow us to review, to edit, and to update the parameter values so we can manage our materials efficiently. We can work with the information presented in these schedule views directly in Revit, or we can export the data. Any schedule can be exported in a number of formats, including delimited text, which is a common format that's used to transfer data to spreadsheet programs. We can also link the values in these materials management parameters to database programs. If we switch to another view, then switch to the Add-ins tab, and choose the Revit DB link utility from the list of external tools. The special extension lets you link the information in your building model with common database formats such as MS Access and ODBC. Let's return to the Export to Navisworks view, and we'll use the Navisworks File Exporter tool to transfer our updating building model, including the new materials management parameters, to Navisworks. Let's enter a convenient name, say Lesson 2, Part 4, and we'll save that away. Once again, exporting all the building elements, including the new parameters and data values we've added. I've appended the updated NWC file containing our updated building model to the Navisworks project, and we can now explore the model to see that our new materials management parameters and the data values have transferred with it. If you switch to the Properties tab in the Selection tree, you'll actually get a list of the different types of properties available for each of the different model elements. We can choose the Element Properties, and if we scroll down this list, 
you'll see that those material delivery status, material order status, any of the values that we filled in in the building model have transferred. Only parameters containing data values are transferred in the NWC format, so the additional parameters for which we haven't yet entered any data did not get transferred. But don't worry, they do exist. As soon as data is entered in Revit, they'll be transferred too. If you expand each of these parameters, you can see that search sets have been defined for each of the values that were transferred from Revit. So, for example, if we'd like to select all of the elements in the model that have been marked as delivered, we can click on the selection set and those items will be selected in the model. They're hard to see now because they're embedded within the entire model, but if we choose Hide Unselected, you'll see that only the elements that have been delivered are highlighted. Let's unhide those and instead we'll switch to Not Delivered. Again, hiding the unselected and you'll see that a different group is selected now. We can run the Timeliner tool to do a 4D simulation and then create search sets to help us select elements based on their starting dates. Let's open the Find Items pane and we'll look at how these search sets are defined. Timeliner is a category of properties. One of the specific properties we can choose is attached to task start, which will report the starting day for the task. And we can choose starting day values based on the valid ones that exist in our project. For example, if we choose and pull down the menu, you'll see these are all the dates where tasks are starting based on our current task timeline. Let's close the Find Item windows and select that criteria to actually see which things are started on the week of 116. Currently we can't see them because they're hidden within the project, but if we say Hide Unselected, you'll actually see these are the different elements which are currently scheduled to be constructed during the week of 116. We have columns, we also seem to have some beam elements. We can use additional search sets based on our materials management parameters to isolate which of these different elements are available on site or haven't yet been delivered. For example, if we choose the delivered search set, you can see that the columns in this region of the building have been delivered. They're okay and they're going to be ready for construction. To make the status of these columns even clearer visually, it may be helpful to right click on one of these columns, say to override the color of the column, and choose a color like green to indicate that everything is okay with these columns. Notice that they now appear in our viewpoint in green. Even more important is to find the ones that haven't been delivered. We can select them, then right click and override. Let's give these a color that indicates more danger, such as red, and really call them to people's attention. So now we have a viewpoint that we can save and share indicating which of these elements are okay for construction based on their materials availability and which ones may need to be expedited or resequenced to handle the fact that they aren't available yet.